Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about photosynthesis. This is the very process that allows life on Earth. Today we're going to specifically talk about the first step of photosynthesis, which are called the light reactions or the light dependent reactions. That means that if the sun is not shining, these processes cannot happen. The other processes, which we'll talk about next time, are called the dark reactions or Kelvin cycle, or the light independent reactions. Let's start off our conversation with a couple of questions to get us to think about this process. Where do we get our energy? We get our energy from eating, right? And where do plants get energy? They get energy from the sun. How do they use the sun's energy? They capture it using a process called photosynthesis. This means that plants are autotrophs and we are heterotrophs. Autotrophs are organisms that can produce their own food from substances available in their surroundings, like using light in photosynthesis. Heterotrophs cannot synthesize their own food and rely on other organisms, both plants and animals, for nutrition. Plants have solar panels called leaves to capture the sun's energy and to store it. So leaves are the solar panels of plants. The larger the surface area, the more light that can be captured. Before we get into the specifics of photosynthesis, I want to take a bird's eye view to see what the inputs are and the outputs. What are the inputs of photosynthesis? If you said sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, you're correct. And what are the outputs? The outputs are oxygen, which is what we breathe, and sugar. So what do we get from plants out of the deal? We get food and oxygen. And what do plants get from us? They get the carbon dioxide that we breathe out. This is a diagram explaining how the light dependent reactions, step one of photosynthesis, is con connected to the light independent reactions, which is also called the Kelvin cycle. At the end of today's and next lecture, you'll be able to recreate this and it will all make sense. Let's do a brief overview. So the plant absorbs sunlight and takes in water and it releases oxygen. In this process, it converts NADP+, this empty truck, to NADPH. It adds two electrons and one hydrogen. And it takes the empty ADP battery and creates ATP. So today we're going to talk about how the plant charges these two batteries, basically fills the truck and charges ADP. The inputs, remember, are sunlight and water. Carbon dioxide is an input into the light independent reactions, which we'll talk about next time. The output that we're going to cover today is oxygen and ATP and NADPH, and the output that we'll talk about next time is sugar. Where is this whole process happening? It's happening within the plant cell, which we see here and specifically in the chloroplast, this green organelle. Inside the chloroplast, there's a lot of space, the white space, which important processes happen in. This is called the stroma. And then you'll see these stacks, which are called thylakoids. What we're going to talk about today happens in here, inside the interior of the thylakoids. So what happens in here is also affected by what's out here, so we can't think of it just alone. We're going to zoom into this membrane, this green line on the screen. So in a little bit, we're going to zoom in to what's happening at that membrane to learn about the process of the light reactions. First, we want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Later on, you can go and watch this video, which gives you an in-depth explanation of all these processes we'll cover today. But the general idea is plants store light energy into a battery. What are the batteries of a plant? ATP, the uncharged version is ADP, and NADPH, 
the uncharged version is NADP+. How do they do this? Using the processes we're going to cover, one of which, which is using a gradient. What's a gradient? A gradient is something that we all understand, but we maybe haven't used the terms before. Have you ever sprayed perfume and then it diffuses in the room? It starts out smelling very strongly, but throughout the day or even just after a few minutes, the perfume molecules diffuse. The perfume molecules basically don't want to be concentrated together. Let's cover this using a graphic. Here are some molecules in very high concentration on this side, and there's a membrane here which the molecules can pass through, and on this side there's a low concentration. Over time, the molecules go down their concentration gradient to become diffused. So the amount of molecules on both sides is equal. From a high concentration to a low concentration. Molecules always move from a high concentration to a low one. This is because they want to be spread out. Let's get started into the steps now that we know what concentration gradients are and how molecules like to move from high concentration to low concentration. Now we're going to get into the specific steps of the light reactions. Let's remind ourselves where this is occurring. It's occurring within the plant cell, in the chloroplast. Inside the chloroplast there's a stroma, the open space, and then there's the thylakoids. We're zooming into this green line to see this membrane and things that are happening on this membrane. Now we're going to zoom into what's happening at the thylakoid membrane. There's a lot of steps, so we're going to use this diagram that was drawn by Kaylee Lynch. She used to be my horticulture student a couple semesters ago. She made this lovely diagram, and you'll want to make a similar one in your own notes as we go through this process. We're going to go through this process a couple times, so don't get overwhelmed and don't draw it right away. Step one in this process is light absorption. So sunlight hits photosystem 2 right here, and in that process it excites or activates electrons. And then they go through a series of electron carriers, which is referred to the electron transport chain. So these electrons, they get excited, and they go through this electron transport chain. They're kind of jumping around, okay? In that process, they release some energy, which does a useful thing, which is take hydrogen, from the stroma, the outside of the thylakoid membrane, and bring those hydrogens to the interior. This is really important for a later step. Next, water, which plants uptake through their roots, is split into electrons, hydrogen, and oxygen. Oxygen that we breathe. The electrons that come off of the water are used to replace these excited electrons that left photosystem to and that replacement is important so that that photosystem 2 remains stable and it doesn't go crazy. The next step is light absorption from the sun into photosystem 1. So this electron, already excited, gets excited again and goes to an even higher energy level. This high energy electron in step 4 travels down a short second leg of the electron transport chain and converts NADP plus to NADPH. Thinking back to step one and two, where hydrogen was pumped into the interior of the thylakoid and water split so we got hydrogen from that. This keeps happening over and over, so more hydrogen comes to the thylakoid interior. Lots of hydrogen. Those hydrogen are in high concentration, and as we just learned, they want to diffuse. As these hydrogen go through their concentration gradient from a high concentration gradient to a low concentration, they pass through ATP synthase, which powers the bringing together of ADP and P to form ATP, the energy molecule of the plant, which is the charged version of the battery. That ATP and NADPH is then sent over to the Calvin cycle, which we will cover the steps of the Calvin cycle next time. This is another drawing that will go through the steps again. Again, we're in the chloroplast, which is in the plant cell, and then we're within the thylakoid. So this is the stroma, the outside, 
and this is the thylakoid interior. So step one, light excites an electron here, and that excites it and sends it down through the electron transport chain. Within the process of the electron transport chain, hydrogen is pumped from the stroma into the thylakoid interior. This electron gets excited again, and in the process, gets to a higher energy level. This energy is then used to convert NADP plus to NADPH. In the meantime, all these processes are happening at once and over and over again. Water is broken into oxygen, hydrogen, and electrons. This electron replaces the electron that it got excited here and then went on the tr electron transport chain, and it's important to replace that or else it will get unstable. It's going to get too excited, too crazy. Because the hydrogens are being released from water into the thylakoid membrane area right here, and the electron transport chain is driving these hydrogens to pump into here, the hydrogen concentration within the thylakoid interior is getting high we know that molecules like to go from high concentration to low concentration. So these hydrogens move from a high concentration to a low concentration, and in the process they fuel, they spin ATP synthase to produce ATP. If you're like many students, all these steps can be a bit overwhelming. What happens? Where? How? That's why I started teaching an analogy. To help you remember these processes. So the analogy is going to help you remember these processes, or at least make you laugh when you think of it. The analogy is a sporting event. We're going to pretend that the Toyota Center is the thylakoid interior. The Toyota Center is where the Rockets play basketball. This is an NBA team from Houston, Texas, United States. We're going to pretend that the stroma is all of Houston, Texas. So we have the outside, the stroma, and inside the Toyota Center is the thylakoid interior. We're going to pretend that the basketball players are electrons. Let's get started. The electrons are the basketball players. The hydrogen are the fans, the people coming to this basketball game. ATP is a battery, so we're going to be charging a battery. NADPH is the scoreboard, and the thylakoid interior is the stadium. Let's get started. In step one and two of photosynthesis, a huge component is bringing hydrogen from the stroma into the thylakoid interior. For the first step of the basketball game, it's bringing fans to come into the stadium. So hydrogen, the fans, we want them to get into the stadium. It's a challenge to get all people to come into the stadium at once because like molecules, people like to diffuse. They like to be spread out just like our diffusion example of molecules. If you don't believe me that this is true, Pretend that you just walked into this library. You have lots of studying to do, and you don't know either of these people. Where are you going to sit? Seat one or seat two? Most of you probably said seat two. That's because we liked to diffuse. Think of it as a low concentration gradient. But we get fans to come to the stadium because they love their team. They love the Rockets and the game is advertised and the tickets are sold. Which room has more energy? You probably said the one with all the people and the flames and the excitement. That energy, just like a bunch of hydrogens inside the interior of the thylakoid, can be captured. In addition to having hydrogen come into the thylakoid membrane in step one and two of photosynthesis, the electrons also enter the electron transport chain which can be thought of as the game beginning. So the electron transport chain initiated is like the game beginning because the electrons or the basketball players are starting to do important things. Then as the game progresses, the electrons 
are still excited, which is the best will players, but they need to be revved up even more. They need to become even more excited. And so we have a halftime show where the basketball players can take a brief break and watch something exciting, such as a cheerleading routine or a light show and music. That's the halftime show. In step four, right after step three, which was the halftime show, we have any DPH formation. Or we have the basketball players doing something really amazing, which is a slam dunk. And that slam dunk can be related to NADP plus because the basket has zero points. And then once you have a slam dunk or a score, you get two points added. And this is just like adding two electrons and a hydrogen to the ND NADP plus molecule. So then we have NADPH. So just like in basketball, two points being added, you get two electrons added to NADP plus and a hydrogen. And so you got NADPH, which is full of energy to enter the Calvin cycle. Then after lots more points by the Rockets, the game is ended, the Rockets won, and the game is over. But remember, we have all this energy, all the people still in the stadium, and we want to capture that. So if we have lots of hydrogen within the thylakoid interior, we want to capture that as those hydrogens go from high concentration to low concentration. So as the people in high concentration within the stadium leave, we want to capture that energy. How do we do that? We use a turnstile. You may have seen these at an amusement park. But when people want to leave, the turnstile will rotate and it will capture the energy, just like a wind turbine works to charge a battery. So the last step of photosynthesis light reactions, which is ATP synthase, can be thought of as a turnstile. As people leave the stadium, the turnstile turns and charges that battery. I hope this analogy helped. Let me summarize it. In step one and two, fans are coming to the game, just like light absorption in photosystem two and photolysis occur. And that is getting the hydrogen into the interior of the thylakoid or the stadium. Then the game starts, which is the electron transport chain. Then there's a halftime show, which is more light absorption, specifically into photosystem one. Then we have a slam dunk or a score, which is NADPH formation. And then the fans leave, and in the process, we capture that energy to charge a battery, which is ATP synthase. So you can remember that a basketball game starts with fans coming in, the game starting, a halftime show, a slam dunk, and fans leaving. If you forget the specific order, that's okay. As long as you all have each five points, that's what's important. All these processes are in photosynthesis are happening all at once. I hope this analogy was helpful. Please feel free to email me with questions or comments or comment below. There are a lot of great videos out there that I recommend you watching so that you can get a handle on how the light reactions of photosynthesis occur. Next time we're gonna talk about the Calvin cycle and I hope you join me for that video as well. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.